happy September, Munson. Welcome to What's New at your Munson Free Library. And welcome back to school. I'm sure all the parents and kids are happy about this. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about our annual appeal. I know you've heard about it the last couple months. We've been doing it all summer long. We have reached over $20,000. I want to thank all of you that have generously donated. It's, it's been a wonderful campaign. Um, it is going on through the end of August, but then we have a special raffle that's going to go on through the month of September. So, and trust me, it's never too late to donate. We, we accept all large and small donations any time of year. But thank you for helping us reach that $20,000 mark. That, that is a huge, big deal for us. And, and thank you very much. And it's all because of you. Because of that, we'll bring you more programs, more materials to check out. Um, actually, I think we're going to add a few more hours. So stay tuned for that. That's coming this fall. Um, but I want to tell you about the raffle we have. I'm sure all of you have heard of Treehouse Brewing Company, um, one of our local favorites, actually national favorites, right? Well. In lieu of a donation, a, a monetary donation to our annual appeal, they have donated a treehouse gift bag. So it's a nice little bag and it's all got little separations in it so you can put your bottles of beer in there. It has a $25 gift certificate to Treehouse Brewing, um, a sticker, a baseball cap, two beer koozies, and two beautiful uh, uh, glass they're beer glasses, so it's really pretty ones. Has two of those. Um, as well as, well, we're not giving you the beer, but we are giving you a 750 uh, milliliter bottle, so you can go to Treehouse and fill up with that $25 gift certificate. We will have the tickets available at the library, or if you know anybody, perhaps me, you might see around town, we will we'll have tickets on us as well. The tickets are limited. 150 tickets were printed, so your chances are good. Uh, the tickets are $5 each. This will be going on through the month of September. The drawing will be October 2nd. So if you are interested in getting a little treehouse, come to the library or see one of us and we'll be happy to sell you some tickets. All the proceeds from that raffle will also go to our annual appeal. So thank you very much, Treehouse Brewing. Um, for the month of September, one special event, different from all our other great events that we have going on, we have an author event on Thursday, September 21st at 6.30 p.m. Madeline Blaze, who is a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, she is an author, she is a professor at UMass. She's written a lot of different books, but her newest one just came out, To the New Owner. It's a Martha's Vineyard memoir. It's a wonderful story, I have to say. I do have the copy checked out right now. I just started reading it myself. Um, but it's about her husband's family had a summer home on the vineyard forever and when his parents passed away they did have to sell it and it's the story of, of the house of the vineyard a little bit of a travel log um, how times have changed it's a wonderful story and I know a lot of you really like Martha's Vineyard and um, and the beach houses and the memories so please come on down Madeline will be there again on September 21st it should be a great event um, and it is a wonderful book so far I'm sure it'll be great all through also, I want to tell you, Thoreau is still going on. This is his year. Um, there are two events this month at the Palmer Public Library. First, um, Wednesday, September 6th, uh, it's at 6 p.m., they are having their Walden book discussion. So please, if you haven't attended one in Wilbraham or one in Munson, you still have time to attend the last one at the Palmer Public Library. On Wednesday, September 13th at 7 p.m., and I know a lot of you are going to be interested in this, they're doing the train to Palmer and beyond. Thoreau did not necessarily like the railroads, but he used them all the time to go visit friends and go to his lectures and see the world. And Corinne Smith, um, who has been at the, the Wilbraham and Munson Libraries this summer, uh, will be giving a talk on Thoreau and his travels on the railroad. So I know we have a lot of railroad buffs out there. Again, September 13th at 7 p.m. in Palmer. And then finally, on October 22nd, that's when we're, we're ending this whole Thoreau bicentennial celebration. It will be on October 22nd. It will be at Memorial Hall in Munson. Uh, Kevin Radiker, who is, uh, he dresses up. He's an impersonator of Thoreau. He will give a talk in Memorial Hall, just like the old days, just what Memorial Hall was built for. And it should be a really great event. And I want to thank the town of Munson and the selectmen 
for funding this program for us. But that is October 22nd. I'll be telling you more of that in October. Of course, we do have our typical events going on. I say typical. They're awesome events. They're just monthly. We have our, our group. We kind of took a break for the summer. Um, we're starting up again Wednesday, September 20th. Remember that is at noontime. It's a brown bag lunch. We discuss art. I don't have a topic for you right now, but within the next week, we will have resources at the library. But come to the meeting, whether you're just interested in art, you want to have a good discussion, you want to listen and meet new people. That's for you. It's always the third Wednesday in, of the month, so September 20th at noontime. Also, we have our Scrabble, which is the fourth Tuesday of every month. Um, it'll be Tuesday, September 26th at 6 p.m. Everyone is welcome. Always a good game. We have at least three or four games going on at a time, and it's a lot of fun. They do get a little rowdy. And I want to tell you about our friends group as well. Um, their next meeting, and they are always the third Wednesday as well. So come to our group, then come back at 6 o'clock, do the friends meeting. Um, Wednesday, September 20th at 6 p.m. Everyone is always welcome. The friends are working on fundraisers. They'll be doing the um, Arts Council Crafts Fair this year in November. They have a bus trip coming up and their bake sales are back. They also took the summer off. Their bake sale will be on Tuesday, September 19th, day before their meeting. They're always looking for people to bake. If you're interested, just contact the library. The bake sale will be going on from 10 we say 10 to 6, it's 10 until they're sold out. So sometimes before that and other times, you never know. But um, the, so please come, everyone is welcome. The friends are always looking for new members. If you're interested in the library and helping out with some programs, some fundraising, the friends are for you. So that's what we have going on in September. Like I said, might have some surprises for you a little bit later in the fall. So you need to stay tuned and we hope to see you at the library. Hi, I'm Sandy Courtney from the Youth Services Department at the Munson Free Library, and I'm here to talk about what's happening and what happened this summer, because it was a fabulous summer uh, at the Munson Free Library, and I have a lot of thank yous to say. Um, the summer reading program this year, the theme was Build a Better World, and it by far was my favorite theme yet. And with the generous support of the Friends of the Munson Free Library, the Munson Cultural Council, the Mass Library System, the Boston Bruins, and the Mass Board of Library Commissioners, we enrolled an all-time high 287 kids for summer reading this year. You might remember last year we broke 200 for the first time, we had 211, and we thought that was amazing. This year, 287 kids, and we could not have done it without the amazing community. We really worked to build a better world. So I have a lot of folks in the community to thank. Starting right here at Impact, thank you to Ryan for making me look good every month and for helping me get the word out to you, viewers like you, as they say on PBS. Without you folks telling kids, um, hey, this is happening at the library and taking the time out of your summer to bring children to programs, none of it could happen. So thank you to the grownups of Munson and surrounding communities for actually bringing the kids out all summer long. Um, I also want to thank a huge thank you to Ryan Deverens at the Munson Public Schools at Quarry Hill. She arranged for me to come and visit the school that last week of school, which is totally a crazy time, but I was able to do classroom visits in every grade from kindergarten to grade four, except for those third graders because of their amazing project where they were doing the stream study. Um, but we got the word out into the classrooms and I got to go and talk about summer reading in each classroom and meet with the kids and the response was outstanding. I completely lost count of how many kids came in and were like, oh, remember me? You came to my school. And they were so excited to sign up for summer reading. And thank you to the grown-ups who were walking around looking at the library like, hmm, I haven't been here in a while. Again, for bringing them both to our kickoff event and all summer long to get them signed up and excited about reading. So. A big thanks to the Munson Public Schools um, and to Ryan especially for the logistics of making that happen. It really made a difference. Um, I also, um, our kickoff event this year, we collaborated with Munson Parks and Rec again to actually have our kickoff event at Veterans Field and that is a blast. We had over 160 people this year show up just between in that like less than two hour time bright sunny morning the first day after school got out and it was a blast. 
thank you to Joy Erickson for the incredible bottle rocket launches. The kids had a blast decorating their own uh, bottles and learning. Shh, don't tell them they were learning. They were just blowing stuff up, right? But they were learning about science, launching bottle rockets, signing up for summer reading, beautiful sunny day. Thank you to all the volunteers, to Joy and her family, to uh, Trinity and Drew for helping out. Thank you to the Munson Lions, Diane and Jenny, for coming and making snow cones. They had to make 200 snow cones, I swear, in an hour and a half. It was amazing. Um, and thank you to Adams for donating all those cases of water to keep us hydrated because, well, I don't know. I hope I was the only one who ended up sunburned, but um, it, was, it was a beautiful, bright, sunny, warm morning. And um, it was just so fun to see so many people there. Thanks to Pikes and Rec for bringing out all the basketballs and the lawn bowling and the hula hoops so the kids were engaged and moving and had lots of fun stuff to do while they waited to launch their bottle rocket or get their snow cone or get signed up and get their goodie bag. Um, it was just a great, great morning and a great way to kick off the summer. So am I forgetting anybody? I probably am forgetting some folks and I really, I'll do my best to try to catch everybody. But if I do forget your name, it's not because I don't appreciate everything you did. Um, I do want to make sure that I thank, I mentioned Joy Erickson, but she really shared her when we first started talking about the summer reading theme being build a better world, her scientist mind em immediately went to engineering and she really brought her talents and her passions uh, for engineering and science and shared them with us. The bottle rocket launching was a blast, but she also um, helped me uh, put on, actually she did most of it, the Get a Grip program, which was a biomedical engineering program for teens, and the uh, Best of Bugs program, which was environmental engineering for the littler kids. So thank you so much for sharing your talent and your passion. And speaking of talent and passion, thank you so much to Tibby Chase for bringing Arlo and Grace, her corgis. So we had a super fun story time with them um, where we learned, we called it Stories with Corgis, and um, we both learned about dog safety, which was very timely in the summertime. Kids are out, they're you know, riding their bikes and so on. And they learned a lot about how to be safe if they meet a dog that they don't know, how to talk to a dog owner to approach a dog safely. And they learned a lot about fun dog training, like clicker training and stuff like that. Super fun story time. Uh, Tibby even brought a little obstacle course and let the dogs play, you know, like had the kids run them through the obstacle course all volunteering her time and without again the people in the community we wouldn't be able to do such a fun program so thank you so much to tibby and joy and trinity and drew and the national honor society kids who came and helped out at the kickoff party uh, shannon and anna we really appreciate your time and your support so one of our most popular programs every summer is our story time on the go did I mention thanks to our community? Because really, the enthusiastic response I get every year when I contact the Munson Police Department, the Munson Fire Department, the Munson Public Schools, those are our big three every year. Um, and, and we couldn't do it without you. We are so blessed in our community. The fire department this year, literally we're getting called out on a call when we're showing up for story time. So, but we rolled with it, it was fantastic. We read the stories and they made it back in time to actually bring out the trucks and let the kids like, you know, check it all out. And they just transitioned right from emergency response, this is what we do, to you know, educating the kids because that's what we do too. And it was fantastic. They just, we had a huge crowd. I, I don't even remember the number. It was more than 80 people. It was just, it was such a big, excited crew. And it's so fun to see the kids like get a chance to meet them and climb all over the truck and take pictures. And it was just a blast. Um, our Munson Police Department, every year, um, Chief Steve kicks us off reading stories. And this year, they actually were able to make sure that Officer Rondo was there with Storm, the canine officer. And that was like a real treat for kids. And it's so important for them to have that positive association and to meet Storm and realize that he's an important part of the force. And they're all part of our community. It was a great way um, to just reinforce that. And again, our months in public schools, Mrs. Clark, our superintendent every year, insists on reading the stories herself. I think she might really enjoy it. I think she misses spending time with the little kids in the classroom because she really rocks her story time. 
And it's a great way for the kids who are going to start school to get a chance to walk around the school. They do a tour. They, um, they gave each kid a book as a momentum of their, memento of their visit. It was just a really lovely morning. So thank you again to our Munson community for making our story time on the go so much fun. This year we were also hosted by the Keep Museum. Um, we had a special Thoreau story time at the Keep and that was great too. There were so many families who had never taken a walk. It's one of the beautiful trails, um, a beautiful place right here in Munson, all about Munson history. So it was really fun to share that too. So. We did the tried and true, we did story time on the go, but we also tried some new stuff this summer. Uh, especially, our goal was every week to have something for all age ranges. From the Littlest Library fans, we did our Bounce and Rhyme Baby Time, which is a great introduction for babies and littles um, to just coming to the library and having fun with words and songs and rhymes. Um, and they like routines, so we kept them right in their Friday groove all summer long. And then our big kids, had, or the middle kids, had the story time and some other fun programs. Our big kids this year, we really kind of broke it out of the mold. We did some new stuff. They kicked off the summer with uh, their traditional Friday night movie and pizza, which was a blast. We watched a Monster Calls, and it was creepy and great and really fun. But we did some other neat stuff. We did a babysitting course where we trained. We had uh, Kim and... Gail's CPR Plus come in and do an introduction to um, ages and stages, basic first aid, introduction, um, they learned CPR. So these kids all got certified as um, babysitters. We had 15 kids with a wait list signed up. It was fantastic. We appreciate that the Friends of the Munson Free Library underwrote that program. So the kids paid for half and the friends covered the other half of the cost. So we were able to make it affordable for them. And yes, we might have a list at the library of those kids. So if you're looking for a babysitter, not that obviously we can recommend anyone, but we can let you know who took the training course and got their certificate. So that was really great and really successful, and we're already talking to them about doing that again maybe in the spring. Um, I touched base briefly on the biomedical engineering program that uh, Joy did with us, the Get a Grip program. This might have been my favorite program of the summer. Basically what this program was, was an introduction. We started off by um, introducing the children, the kids. They were all grades fifth, and excuse me, start that again. So one of my favorite programs this summer was probably the Get a Grip, the biomedical engineering. This program was for kids in grades five plus. And we started by introducing participants to the challenges uh, facing amputees in parts of the world where access to medical care is not readily available, whether that's because of uh, poverty, conflict, um, or natural disasters. Specifically, they were introduced to the idea of um, a young girl living in Afghanistan who had lost her arm um, because of an IED. And the challenge that these kids were faced with was to develop a prototype of a prosthetic arm that this girl could use to be able to accomplish her basic activities of daily living. Things like carrying a bucket of water, um, things like picking up um, food, grapes was the example that we used. So they worked together as teams of three or four kids and they were given a list of supplies of things readily available, things like PVC pipe and hooks and um, wood shims and um, screws and paper bowls and things that would be affordable and accessible to people living in different parts of the world who might not have access to medical care. And they had an hour and a half to, within their budget and their time constraint, put together a prototype. And then they competed in challenges to see if they could accomplish these activities of daily living, i.e. carrying that bucket of water and picking up a certain number of grapes within a time period and so on. And it was fantastic to watch them first off realize, oh, you know, this is, this is real in other parts of the world. These are challenges that people face. And what could I do? Like, how could I, at no point were they like, well, I don't know what I would do. They like dove into this problem. They figured out, they had somebody figure out the budget, keep them on budget, keep them on time, um, put together their prototypes. And then they all went out and all of them had some degree of success, but nobody had the perfect thing right off the bat. 
My favorite part of this was with 15 minutes to spare after they all went through the paces and tried the challenges and had, you know, like that worked and this didn't work and oh, that team did this. They had 15 minutes left and Joy asked them, so does anybody want to go in and try to refine their design, maybe try something else? And all of the teams were like, yeah, ran back in, took what they had learned from watching each other and like refined their designs and like perfected what they had worked on and then came back out and did it again and made improvements. We could have done this for another hour. It was so cool to watch these kids thinking about what they can do to build a better world. Um, this is the kind of stuff that makes me really like my job, you probably can tell. So it was really fantastic and thank you to Joy and thank you to all the kids who came and brought their, their enthusiasm and their interest and so on and like worked so hard to make it a great day. That was super, super fun. Now, that was my personal favorite, but I'm gonna say, I think our most popular program was our teen escape room. All thanks and props to Tegan for this one. This was totally her idea, and she ran with it. She designed the most amazing escape room. Uh, we did it in the DeSantis community room. We ran, I think we ran four uh, teams of eight kids through, and then we had adults who were like, well, what about us? And we ran another group of adults through. We could have done it, we could have done it three days in a row. We had a wait list. It was fantastic. Basically, kids came in, if you're familiar with the escape room uh, craze, we did a Harry Potter theme. Uh, the Niffler had been stolen and they had to solve the clues to find the Niffler to get to the end. Um, it was fantastic. We started at two o'clock in the afternoon and we ran our last group through at seven. It was absolutely fantastic. And we will definitely be looking at doing that again in the fall. So keep your eyes open for that one. Um, we expected uh, just because of our numbers that we were gonna have a good turnout for our grand finale and we were not disappointed. We are very grateful to the Munson Cultural Council for funding uh, us bringing the science tellers to um, Munson for our grand finale. We are thankful to the town of Munson for letting us use Memorial Hall and we're glad that we used Memorial Hall because we had over 90 people show up um, for the Tall Ships and Pirate Tales presentation. The science tellers are amazing because they incorporate science and storytelling and just like bring all the kids and get kids involved and it's a very interactive show and it was a blast. Like I just I can't say enough about them. That was super fun at Memorial Hall. And then after that, that was our grand finale, but we still needed to reward some of our outstanding readers. Our kids uh, ages four to 11, one of their prizes, if they completed their reading challenge for the summer of reading at least 10 books, was to have a pool party with ice cream at Quarry Hill. A big thanks to Liz Manley and to the uh, lifeguards. They definitely worked hard because we had over 100 people show up for our pool party with ice cream to reward our outstanding readers. It was a blast. Thank you to Adams for giving us a great discount price on those Hoodsy cups. Um, that really helped out a lot. Thanks again to Drew and Trinity and Diane for coming and making sure everybody got their ice cream. And thanks again to all the grown-ups who brought the kids to all the programs all summer long. Um, we couldn't have done it without you. So whew, that was summer reading. So uh, let's see, what's next? Oh, that's right, school's starting and it's time to get started with our fall programming. So story time, yay! We took a little break in August so that um, I had some planning time. I might have taken a vacation too, that was good. Um, but now it's time to get back to story time. Wednesday mornings for the preschool set at 10.30 every week, we do story time with songs and books and projects, crafts, activities related to different themes. Um, just having a great time. It's open, no registrations required. Um, and we would love to see some new faces this year. Do you have that kiddo who started kindergarten and you still have a little one at home? We'll help you keep them entertained. Come on down to story time, Wednesday mornings at 1030. So our first story time will be Wednesday, September 6th, and then we'll be back on the road. Um, our baby time, Bounce and Rhyme baby time, September 1st is a Friday. So Bounce and Rhyme baby time starts back up Friday at 1030. This is for the littlest library fans. We get together and we sing our songs and we shake our shakers and we do rhymes and we just introduce basic early literacy skills to the littlest library fans. And it's a chance for you as a grown-up 
to maybe talk to some other grown-ups. Uh, if you're home with the baby, especially once the weather gets going, um, it's nice to be a, have a place to get out of the house a little bit. So come on down and play with us Friday mornings at 1030. Our Lego time, we've been adding all kinds of cool stuff to Legos. It's not just about Legos anymore. Legos and more, I'm calling it. Um, during the summer, we broke out, um, we had everything from Jenga to snap circuits. Like, so there's all kinds of cool stuff. Lego time is for all ages. We have Duplos and train tracks for the littlest guys. And then we have all kinds of Lego stuff. I've been introducing some challenges too. So if kids are looking for some inspiration on what to build. So that first Lego time, let's see, it's the second Thursday of the month. Um, all year round. And so that will be September 14th uh, from 4.30 to 5.30. No registration required. You just drop in. So we hope to see you then. Um, let's see. So keep your eyes open. There's going to be all kinds of good stuff starting in October as well. Uh, our Young Explorers Book Club for the elementary age readers will be kicking off again. Um, we are hoping to have a Read with Arlo program starting up again where kids, elementary, our emerging readers can come in and read to Arlo. That's that adorable Corgi that was at Stories with Corgis. He loves when people read to him. He's, he just, I don't, Corgis are the cutest dogs ever. They're like little and they're short and they're lovable and Arlo has the best disposition ever. Um, so keep your eyes open for that. We're going to be doing a Friday night movie night with the teen group soon. I'll be getting my YOLO crew back together to um, have them give me some ideas and talk about programming too. So if you know a kiddo ages 12 and up who um, likes to read or just, just looking for something to get involved with, it's also a great way to earn volunteer hours. Um, we get together once a month and keep an eye out on our website, MunsonLibrary.com, under Programs for Kids. Information is always there or um, available at the library. So there's all kinds of good stuff coming up. Happy fall, happy back to school, and thanks for helping us build a better world.